Hello, so it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. We're just going to look at the jib system on a Hobie Tiger, the way that we have it set up here at Wildwind. So let's take a look. So here we've got the jib track, the jib car, and then joint to the jib car, we've got the jib traveler control line, which comes through a fair lead on the bow sprit and then to a cleat on the port side. And if we just follow the route of the jib sheet here, so from a carabiner on the clue of the jib, we're then going down to a small purchase system on the jib car, and then this line is coming forwards to a fixed block on the bow sprit, just where the strut comes down, and then this line is coming back where it meets the actual jib sheets. Then each jib sheet is being led back to another block, which is on a line coming from the center. And then this comes outboard to a cleat. And then from there, the rope goes inside the front beam where it's being taken away on a piece of elastic. We use a small rope here, tied around the base of the bow sprit just to hold these ropes closer together, which means then the jib sheet will run better under the self-tacking jib track without it fouling on anything. Dusting the jib can be done from either side of the boat as it is continuous. So we can sheet in and release the jib from either side of the boat. And then the idea is the excess sheet is taken up inside the beam on the shock cord takeaway system there. With the jib car setting on the Tiger, generally we're having the jib car set just inside where the toe strap is on the trampoline for most conditions. And then only in really strong conditions, we'll loosen this off so that the jib car is almost going to the end, but not actually touching the end, just so that it's not gonna hit the end when we tack or jibe causing potential damage to the system. So that's about the size of it with the jib sheet system here. The jib Cunningham line is tied off underneath. We put a plastic protector on our jibs here just to stop uh, any chance of damaging the spinnaker on any split rings or clevis pins under there. So the jib Cunningham line is tied off here. It goes up inside the zip of the jib where on this particular one it just passes through an eye no need for any blocks on there because there shouldn't be that much friction down here through an eye on the strut of course you can put a pulley block on there if you want to is then led down to the bow tang fitting where it's passing through a stainless ring and then this comes back to a small block and then this line one end is tied to the dolphin striker the other is led to a cleat so we can adjust the jib tension while we're on the move so what we're looking for with the tension in the luff of the jib or the jib cunningham is just to get rid of any creases that are in the front of the jib the amount of tension that's required is going to change as the wind changes. So in light winds, we're gonna have less tension in the jib sheet, which means we need less tension in the jib cutting it. So with the sheet in this position, we're just gonna pull this on until we're taking the creases out of the luff of the jib. Sometimes it is necessary to ease the jib sheet to be able to adjust the jib Cunningham if there's a lot of tension in the sheet especially. And then as the wind gets stronger, we're gonna have more tension in the jib sheet. And if we do that without adjusting the jib Cunningham, that is going to pull the luff of the jib down, creating more creases. So in a stronger wind, we're going to need to tension the jib Cunningham line more so that we're getting rid of those creases. That is also going to give us a flatter jib 
uh, which is going to be much more efficient for sailing in the strong conditions. Thank you very much.